Hi everyone! When we're in the cinema or at home watching movies, we usually have to go through the opening with the logo of the film studio first. These logos have a very interesting story behind them, but almost no one has ever thought about how they were made. For example, do you know what mountain the Paramount logo is depicting? How many stars surround it? Why are they there? Or what's with the Walt Disney Castle? Why is the boy fishing on the DreamWorks logo? Are you intrigued already? Then get yourself comfortable while we show you the history of the most famous studio logos. Let's get it on. The Paramount Majestic Mountains logo was first drawn as a doodle by W. W. Hodkinson during a meeting with Adolf Zucker, who was one of the founders of Famous Players Film Company that eventually became Paramount. It was based on the Ben Lomond Mountain from his childhood in Utah. The first logo was used in 1914 and it is now the oldest surviving logo in Hollywood. The original logo has 24 stars, which symbolize Paramount's then 25 contracted movie stars. It's now 22 stars. It beats me why those stars were reduced, though. Columbia Pictures This famous logo depicting a woman holding a torch, a symbol of America, was created in 1924 and showed a lady draped in a US flag and holding a torch. There were no clouds in the background and the forehead of the woman was covered with a headdress. It looked very primitive and the whole picture looked more like a sketch. Six years later, the logo was improved. The lady became more elegant. She coiffed her hair and lost the headdress, and the flag was now barely seen. The font was now different, the letters got bigger, and the writing was now behind the girl. But the most important thing was that the empty background was now filled with clouds, and the torch was no longer flickering and blinking, but glowing smoothly instead. In the next few years, the logo was slightly changed, and the word pictures was added. But the now classic look of the logo was created in 1993, after Columbia Pictures was bought by Sony. The logo was repainted digitally by New Orleans artist Michael Diaz. Michael Diaz hired Jenny Joseph as a model for the logo. Diaz decided that the flame shouldn't be so bright and that the logo should mainly focus on the girl. Therefore, she was redrawn more elegant and tender than ever before. Finally, in 1996, the animation was changed. First, you could see the torch and then the rest of the picture. Logo. Chances are you see it as just a cool way to spell out the company's name. If you're a computer nerd, though, well, you'll see it in a completely different light. The first two letters represent an analog symbol and the second two letters are binary symbols. Number four, Amazon. Over the years, Amazon has become incredibly popular and its logo is very noticeable. Most people look at the logo and see the arrow underneath and assume that it's a smiley face. While it does look like a smiley face, it's actually an arrow. If you look close, you'll see that the arrow goes from the A in Amazon to the Z in Amazon. They're trying to tell you that they sell just about everything. Ethan Elias Metro Goldwyn Mayer In 1924, American lyricist Howard Dietz created a logo for the Goldwyn Pictures depicting Leo the Lion roaring. That's how the lion story started. Over the years, at least seven lions interpreted Leo. The first lion was Slats, but the logo was noiseless, so Slats was there only for decoration. The next one, Jackie, was the first one to roar, although back then the films were silent. The roar was recorded with the special equipment, and in each cinema there was a phonograph placed behind the screen to reproduce the sound during the opening. Then there were two others, Telly and Coffee, but we don't know much about them. Then there was Tanner, famous for its perfect mane. And finally, in 1957, the studio shot the logo featuring its most famous lion, the one we all know from our childhood. He is called Leo, and he's the one we still see on the logo. By the way, no lions were harmed on the set, so don't believe any stupid rumors. If someone shows you a picture to prove you otherwise, just know that it is fake. The 20th Century Fox Film Corporation came about in 1935, when 20th Century Pictures and Fox Film Company merged. Landscape artist Emil Cosa Jr. is credited with creating the original 20th Century Pictures. If you're wondering who Cosa was, he was famous for his matte painting of the Statue of Liberty that is showed at the end of the 1968 movie Planet of the Apes and many other films. After the merger, Cosa replaced Pictures Inc. with Fox to make the current look. DreamWorks Ow. One day back in 1994, three brilliant people got together. Director Steven Spielberg, Disney director Jeffrey Katzenberg, and music producer David Geffen. They decided to create a new film studio that's now known as DreamWorks. We associate the company's name with the fishing boy of the logo. Yeah, the one sitting on the moon. But the original idea was actually slightly different. 
They were originally looking for a computer-generated image of a man fishing from the moon. But visual effects artist Dennis Muren, who was then working along with Spielberg, insisted on making the logo by hand. And so they asked illustrator Robert Hunt to draw it. Hunt was called in to execute the final image on which the motion version was based. It took Hunt three months to complete the final motion logo with the boy fishing from the moon. Spielberg loved this version and decided to use it for his new company. By the way, the moon boy is William Hunt, the son of the illustrator. Brothers, the WB Shield. Warner Brothers has had quite some history and yes, it is legally bros, not brothers. It went through 11 logos for it to settle on the one currently in use. The company was started by four Jewish brothers who emigrated from Poland, Herbert, Albert, Sam, and Jack Warner. At the start, Warner Brothers had trouble attracting top talent. In 1925, after Sam's urging, Warner Brothers made the first feature-length talking pictures. Harry famously said, who the hell wants to hear actors talk? And that got the ball rolling for the studio to make Warner Brothers famous. Quality. Number 7. Toyota The Toyota logo isn't just some design that an advertising agency thought up to make the brand recognizable. The three ellipses in the logo actually represent something. The first represents the heart of the customer. The second represents the heart of the product. The third represents the progress in the field of technology. These are the three foundations of the company. ...that it is fake. The Walt Disney Company just like Warner Brothers, Columbia Pictures, and many other companies, the Walt Disney Company was founded by two brothers, Walt and Roy Disney. This was back in 1932. It was first a small motion picture studio, but it grew little by little and eventually became one of the biggest Hollywood studios ever. Nowadays, it has 11 theme parks, two water parks, and a couple of broadcast networks. The Disney logo is worldwide famous, but not many know what the castle depicts. The castle is actually called Neuschwanstein or New Swanstone Castle, and it is a 19th century Romanesque revival palace in southwest Bavaria in Germany. It was the prototype for the logo. Besides, it was the prototype for the Sleeping Beauty theme castle in the Disneyland Park in Paris. But the logo looked like this until 2006. It was then replaced by a totally new 3D computer-generated logo created by the Weta Digital Studio and based on another Disneyland fortress, the Cinderella Castle, which used Chateau Doucet as a prototype. The new logo was first shown on the premiere of the movie Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. Thanks for watching.